in my setup at the new house yet. Um, I didn't actually have the right microphone selected. <laughs> so I moved in at my new house. My move is all complete. I've had some free time to work on some stuff again now. So I decided to have two main goals coming back to the plugin again. One would be to work on the melee grip, melee grip script that I've been promising and I've made progress on that. And another is to start fleshing out the example template some more with some plugin features that aren't exampled in it and changes that have happened to the plugin since a lot of this was originally made. And just, you know, things that people have asked me questions on and I'm tired of trying to describe through text. So the first thing I decided to do was to start working on the example gun and show off how to use the um, how to use the gun tool script on this. So gun tools is on the gun now. The the recoil is handed by the gun handled by the gun tools. If you take gun tools off of it, it falls back to the old manual recoil. But um, by default, there's a gun tool script on it, and it will use that recoil. This button, this is actually something that's kind of an example too, is that this button's on here. Uh, there's a bug with late updates in Engine currently where child bodies will get occluded by their parent bodies um, during occlusion calling. And I guess the late update moves the scene representation out of order. I know it loops through the wrong way. It'll move the um, parent before the child, and I guess there's some kind of uh, timing issue where occlusion gets called during that move or something. So the child will disappear into the body when you're going like this, and that's why I've had previous videos where you could see buttons that I had put on the gun flickering when you're moving it around. So to fix that, I set this button to be um, use the bounds of its parent, so it never happens. It's just static. It looks fine. Anyways, though, with this disabled, you have normal two-handed. just works normally. And with it enabled, it enables the virtual stock mode. So when you get close enough, you can see how my debug drawing for the virtual stock goes back in here. And how um, the gun doesn't line up with my hand exactly. It lines up with my neck more based off of this. So this is straightforward. And it lurps in and out of influence based on the settings on the gun tools. So that's a way to um, for people to get used to the gun tools and see how they work and what they do. Something else is people always ask me about um, secondary gripping something, holding it to your face, you know, letting go of the rear, you know, breaching, and then going back on the on the gun again. So I decided to example that on this. It's a pretty simple workflow. Um, I'm not entirely happy with how it's working on this because of, um, well, I didn't want to mess with the template character any. I didn't want to make changes to the big convoluted grip script that it uses for debug testing just to enable this so it goes a little sideways from that it does it all on the gun um, and there's different methodologies with the plugin for how you can use it Ooh, my controller isn't tracking yeah I've got a lot of moving boxes in this room still <laughs> so I lose tracking sometimes anyways um there's a lot of methodologies for how you can grip with my plugin. You can grip with how the template does it, where the character does all the gripping. You can do it where um, the character is just like, oh, this is an object here. I'm going to tell the object that I'm here and then let the object grip itself. And that works too. And you can also do an amalgam of them, where let's say the character goes to grip an object, does all the basic grippling, and then special functions like this, where you can release and then regrip is all handled by the um, is all handled by the weapon itself. So you can see that inside the weapon now. Where what I do is when I release the primary, I'm like, oh, there's a secondary. I'm going to grip on the secondary now. Store that there was a secondary and remember its original position, so that when I bring this hand back in, we're right back to where we were. And you could do something like where um, you prevent that where it snaps like this, that's because I'm going to the um, primary attachment point here. You're probably going to want to do that because then you have everything lined up like you want. You can lerp into the grip, you can do whatever you want, but I just have it set to snap too at the moment. Um, something else that I did is I did some work on the door. Um, this now uses a custom physics constraint component that I've added to the plugin. 
I wanted to expose some things that the default one didn't have. I wanted to add some more functionality to door and I ran into where the default physics constraint component cannot do certain things. And it was frustrating because I've ran into that before. And I decided just to make my own again. So under the miscellaneous folder, there's now a VRE physics constraint component with a few additional features. Notably, you can set the constraint component to uh, force constraints instead of acceleration, which wasn't available at all before and doesn't look like it's going to be available in chaos, period. Um, I don't know on that one, but I'm forcing it to be enabled when using physics. Also, it I set the it so that you can um, you can get and set the angular offset for the constraint, which was also something you couldn't even access at all in Blueprint, and in C++ it was kind of hard to work with. Because you're doing C++, you, unless you did what I'm doing here, you'd have to change the angular, make sure the door is back to identity, and then reinitialize the constraint. Because if you reinitialize the constraint when it's not in identity position like this, then the constraints can be the wrong orientation because how the constraint components work. And you couldn't change angular orientation without reinitializing the constraint. So what I did is I added a function that um, gets the angular rotation offset if you need it for something. And then also you can set it, and when it sets it, it will decompose the um, original angular offset rotation by the current uh, transform of the door back into the uh, constraint components space and then delta it with the new angular rotation offset and then bring it back into here and modify it so that you can live set it like you can open the door it gets the 45 degree angular offset like that which lets it open all the way and halfway through the operation you change it to 10 degrees and suddenly it's limited to only 10 degrees of swing so you can do neat things like I mean I'm sure you guys have seen the valve presentation by now where you know when the door is locked it only goes a little bit like that well there's a boolean that does that on this door now where it's locked I don't have it enabled by default because it's kind of wonky I don't like it actually but you can have it where it's locked instead of just not opening it just wiggles and that's using the angular offset anyways um, this door now uses a deadbolt which is just a uh, VR lever I think I don't remember if I used lever or dial for this it doesn't really matter I mean, they both work for this. Where if it's locked and it's closed, you can't open the door. You can unlock it, open it. If you lock it while it's open, it doesn't matter until it's closed. And then it's locked because the deadbolt's engaged. Let me change this movement mode. I haven't changed the controls to joystick yet. It's kind of annoying to teleport with this. On the other side, I have another lever. Same thing. Um, really, these levers should be one piece or the meshes are attached to a lever or something but I just didn't bother I got a little lazy with it I modeled the door handle and then duplicated it and made two levers in the same lot same logic when the lever gets engaged to um oh here when the door is closed when the lever gets engaged to 70 percent of full rotation then it also grabs the door inside the door and until then it doesn't so like here it's not doing anything and when it's engaged it grabs the door but when it's out, since the door is already free swinging, it grabs the door immediately until it's closed. You can also set the um, deadbolt by this key in the back, which is actually a separate actor that's attached to the deadbolt. And when it's gripped, when it's engaged, it has you grip the deadbolt. Um, eventually, I'll make this so you can pull the key out. And, like, it'll engage until it's like halfway out, and then it won't be able to turn the deadbolt anymore. And you can pull the key out and then snap it back and then move it again. I just decided I'd move on because that wasn't that big of a deal Ooh. I had that locked so that's another example of um, more complex gripping where the object actually handles some of the gripping itself like I said when you grip this handle you're really just gripping the handle oh, the door was closed you're really just gripping the handle until it hits that far and then it also grips the door and you're gripping both at once I didn't make a custom component that swings and does that. I didn't make it so that, you know, anything special. It's just a VR lever and that normal door, and you just grip the door when it goes down low enough, and it works fine, and it works in multiplayer. Uh, another thing about multiplayer is physics replication in 4.23 is way better than it's ever been in the engine before, noticeably better. Um, some of you have probably seen the silent video where I just showed that, how 
this door feels really good in multiplayer, even though it's literally just physics, which normally would feel terrible. And I'm not doing any manual syncing on it. So that's good. Uh, the other primary focus after the example template is going to be the melee grip script. I have the I just released a patch yesterday to the plugin that alters a bunch of things on the back end to give me injection points from grip scripts where you can alter the physics constraints that the controllers create when they go and pick up a physics object before and after the joint is made. So you can say, um, before the joint is made, you'll grab it and you can have the grip script say, well, you know, I don't want you to grip it there. I'm going to have you offset it so you're actually grabbing it there. So grip script has the ability to rotate and offset the actual grip, which comes in handy for melee. We say for this gun, this is actually pointed um, Y forward on the gun. But if I want to do logic on, like, say, melee, and, like, I know I want to how far to slide on the shaft, instead of doing everything where I'm going between component facings or stuff like that, it's kind of convenient just to have a component on it that I rotate. Treat that as the basis of orientation, so now I know this direction is X forward for this uh, object. And then... Um, I can rotate the handle, the well, the kinematic actor that I'm creating the physics constraint for that I make. I can rotate that kinematic actor to face along with the gun so its X forward is on aligned with the gun. And then you can do things like unlock the um, twist on the constraint so that the gun can rotate like this freely or, you know, unlock swing and lock only twist so you have only control over this side of the gun but the rest of it's only controlled by the two-handed kind of setup. There's a bunch of stuff you can do with it. Um, I figured it'd be good to have. I'm not going to be opening up those injection points to Blueprint because, um, well, honestly, it'd be really hard to do anything with it in Blueprint. Most of the utility of it is in directly modifying the physics constraints, and there's no way to do that in Blueprint. The second part of it is the post-constraint creation, and it's right before you're updating the properties on the constraint, after the drives have been created and set. It gives you access to edit those drives. So say I all the properties have been set and we're in the post injection point and I'm like, you know, this is the second hand to, to uh, grip this object and it's in front of the other handle on that orientation axis that we set up. I don't want this hand to have control over, um, over roll on this object. I only want the rear hand to have control over roll. So I'm going to go right before the constraints updated and I'm going to delete the um, swing axes from the constraint settings. I mean, I'm going to delete the twist axis from the constraint settings and only give it the swing. Or I'm going to delete angular influence altogether and just have it have positional influence on it and let the angular influence only come from the rear hand. That kind of thing. You can change settings. You can um, change center of mass offset settings and things, you know. It just gives a lot of flexibility, and you'll see why when I bring out the um, melee grip script, why I added these things and what they do specifically. I'll be updating the uh, swords in there to the melee grip script when it's out and uh, refining them. They were just quickly thrown together to give someone an example. My original example of melee swords is actually significantly better than those ones, and um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of why I want to remake those because they're not as good as the originals. Let's, I need to make a better physics constraint on this gun. It's so jittery. All right. But, I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, I think that's everything. I'm working on Melee scripts next. Uh, physics have been updated and plugins running stably in 4.23. Um, that's it. I'll, I guess next video will probably be showing off some of the Melee stuff, so look forward to that. See ya.